There is many a manga series that has multiple anime adaptations spread across decades sometimes. Togashi's Hunter x Hunter was first adapted towards the tail end of the 90s, but then abandoned because of the author's infamous penchant for hiatuses. It was remade in 2011 when there was more of Hunter x Hunter to adapt, but Togashi Sensei's health issues are serious, and these days we just cherish the Hunter x Hunter chapters that we do get. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was first adapted as an OVA series starting in 1993, but after some controversy regarding the depiction of the Quran in the sixth episode of the second season, it was dropped like dead weight. JoJo's was revived in 2012 as an animated series, and the response to this adaptation has been far more positive. Kota Hirano's Helsing was given the opposite treatment to JoJo, in that it was first produced as an anime series, and then an OVA series. But unlike JoJo's or Hunter x Hunter, the two Helsing adaptations are entirely different from each other. So, without further ado, let's break it all down. These are the 10 biggest differences between Helsing 2001 and Helsing Ultimate. Explore! Number 1. The Helsing Organization is an actual organization. Let's start off with the most obvious difference between Helsing 2001 and Helsing Ultimate, and it's one that you guys might not have expected if you've only seen the latter. But the Helsing Organization actually feels like an organization in the first show. Both Helsing Ultimate and the manga depict Helsing as this super clandestine, super secretive group that hunts down vampires and such in secrecy and does it all with less than 100 operatives most of whom are somehow always on guard duty at the manor. Helsing 2001 took a more realistic approach and fleshed out Helsing's role as a top-secret military wing of the British government, giving it a proper command structure, equipment, facilities, and missions that made it actually feel like an organization. The original manga's intent with the organization wasn't to show off its day-to-day -day activities, but rather focus on the explosive action its premise offers the story. But Helsing 2001 actually did a great job at incorporating the bureaucratic angle of clandestine government agencies into its overall narrative. For example, in Helsing Ultimate, Integra is introduced while she is berating a police officer for not even believing in vampires and werewolves and such, because that's apparently how good Helsing was at keeping supernatural deaths silent. But in Helsing 2001, the Helsing organization works in conjunction with special police forces like the D-11. And generally, most people within the British policing agencies seem to be aware of their existence. Helsing has proper commanders like Peter Ferguson and Gareth Henderson, and they even go out for missions instead of just Alucard and Ceres being the prime focus of the story. Helsing is even forced to deal with and capitulate to bureaucratic pressures, something that is simply glossed over with Integra's strong and charismatic presence in the main series. The funeral scene that takes place after the Valentine's Brothers' assault in Helsing Ultimate is not nearly as impactful or touching as the one that takes place in Helsing 2001, and a lot of that is down to the fact that Studio Gonzo actually took the time to make us care about people beyond the big four. But that isn't the only thing that's different about the Helsing organization in the first adaptation, because... Number 2. Helsing 2001 feels more like a vampire detective anime. The opening sequence of any anime is incredibly important because it sets the tone for the rest of the series. Helsing Ultimate establishes itself as a pretty dark and twisted story early on as it opens with Integra running for her life from her own uncle and having to awaken the dormant Alucard in a bid to protect herself. Alucard's rabid attack on Integra's uncle and his henchmen lets you know all you need to know about how dangerous he is, and Integra's subsequent taming of him lets you know all you need to know about how badass she is. From there, Helsing Ultimate pivots to the Cheddar Priest arc, which quickly establishes just how brutal and perverse this anime is going to be. And while those things can be said about Helsing 2001's opening sequence, the context is entirely different. Helsing 2001 opens up with Alucard investigating a vampire seductress who had managed to seduce a politician into going to a secluded location with her. As the politician starts putting his slimy hands all over her, Alucard manifests from the sofa of the motel they're probably at and begins berating the human for not even realizing just what he was trying to screw. He then deals with the working girl vampire with his trademark castle in the blink of an eye leaving the politician traumatized and us mesmerized. But this introduction makes Helsing 2001 feel more like a detective anime, and that feeling doesn't go away for the rest of the show. Helsing 2001 actually takes the time to show how Integra's team of supernatural beast hunters solve cases, 
and it's very different from Helsing Ultimate's usual setting of search and destroy. What happens in Helsing Ultimate OVA 1 is broken across the first half of the series, with each case getting a lot more investigation time than in the show that is actually faithful to the manga. The best example of Helsing 2001 feeling more like a detective anime than a badass vampires and Nazis anime is The Flesh Investigation, where Walter literally does a deep web dive to uncover snuff films that leaked the existence of vampires to the world at large. This entirely original storyline was one of the more intriguing aspects of Helsing 2001 and it was single-handedly responsible for us sticking with the series, even when it started going downhill. Number 3. Saras is featured more prominently in the first show. While it is true that Saras Victoria is a central part of the Helsing manga and Helsing Ultimate as well, both of these things are decidedly the a la carte show in terms of his overwhelming narrative importance. Helsing 2001 is different because if you just stopped watching it midway, you'd have thought Saras was the protagonist of the story not Alucard. As a young police girl who ends up getting turned into a vampire by THE Dracula himself, Ceres has problems adjusting to her newfound life and abilities, to say the least. She was human one day, and the next day, humans became the only source of food that could sustain her. It's quite a shock to the system, as Tokyo Ghoul fans would know. But the impact of said shock is explored far more in Helsing 2001. Saris's struggles with accepting her new identity are made evident from the get-go when she arrives in a dingy cellar with a coffin that was supposed to be her new home. She then receives a packet of medicated blood as her dinner, but she throws it away because she still thinks of herself as human. This ends up affecting her missions because on her very first outing as a Helsing field operative, she screws the pooch and has to delegate her shot to another person because she just couldn't bring herself to take a life, even if it was that of a monster. Saras isn't immediately accepted by everyone either, and her being ostracized for being a vampire is a major theme of her character arc in Helsing 2001. Even Integra doesn't like her at the beginning, but that's more because of her incompetence than her being a vampire. Over the course of 13 episodes, we see Saras bloom into a strong and confident Draculina, who is comfortable in her own skin. And while that also happens in Helsing Ultimate, the kind of investment we had for her character arc in Helsing 2001 just felt different. Pip Bernadotte wasn't in the show, and we didn't even see the most horrific detail about Saris's life play out on screen, and yet somehow, we got more attached to this police girl than the other one. That's how well Studio Gonzo pulled off her story. But Saras isn't the only one who gets proper treatment in the show. Number 4. Side characters aren't as fleshed out in Helsing Ultimate as they are in Helsing 2001. This was to be expected given the limited material that was out at the time, but still, Helsing 2001 did an amazing job of making side characters feel like actual people and not just another body for Alucard to bag before the next one. We've already mentioned how Ceres was given a much more expanded role in the first Helsing adaptation, but that also rings true for everyone else. You can go watch our top characters that appeared in Helsing 2001, but not in Helsing Ultimate, if you want to know more about this, but let's give you some examples that you'll recognize instead. In Helsing Ultimate 1, Ceres is not only saved by the Cheddar Priest, she goes on her first successful mission with Alucard, where she shoots the female half of a rampaging vampire couple and also meets the paladin, Alexander Anderson, all in the space of a single episode. By contrast, Anderson doesn't show up until episode 3 of Helsing 2001, and both the Cheddar Priest and that vampire couple get a lot more screen time as a result. The first episode of Helsing is almost entirely dedicated to the Cheddar incident, while the second episode names the vamp couple as Jessica and Leaf. In Helsing Ultimate, their motivations for becoming vampires is unclear, but in Helsing 2001, it's pretty clear that Leaf and Jessica are simply high-chasing degenerates who became vampires to satisfy their needs for a better kick. Instead of Alucard, it was Peter Ferguson who oversaw Saris's sniper shot at Jessica, and when she finally succeeded in her mission, because she had failed to do so earlier in the episode, Ferguson finally welcomed her to Helsing. Luke and Jan Valentine, the psychotic vampire brothers, are also given a lot more background as owners of a club, proprietors of vampire working girls, and suppliers of the Freak Chip that plays a central role in Helsing 2001's artificial vampire problem. Anderson's arrival in Britain is tied to the death and revival of the Italian exchange student Enrico Stivaletti, and the flesh investigation was created entirely for the purpose of giving Helsing an existential crisis in order to make the Valentine assault feel even more impactful. MI5 plays an unexpectedly large role in the story, and even Integra gets more humanizing character moments 
like the flashback to her childhood, which is entirely missing from Helsing Ultimate. Sure, the whole Laura business was a bit too much, but that episode is also one of the most tense episodes in the entire franchise, so what does that tell you? Any story is only as good as its characters are, and while Helsing Ultimate feels epic because of its larger-than-life cast, Helsing 2001 feels like a thriller due to the fleshed-out roster and the attachments we develop to them as a consequence of its storytelling. Number 5. Millennium Doesn't Exist in Helsing 2001 One of the things that makes Helsing such an epic series is its main villains. The idea of vampire Nazis coming out of hiding to take over the world once again is not entirely original, but the way Koda Hirano did it was definitely unique. This is why many people get turned off of Helsing 2001 when they realize Millennium isn't in the story. People want their I love war speech doses on the regular Studio Gonzo, and the Major did exist in manga canon at this time, so you could have included that iconic monologue in your adaptation somehow. But no, you instead chose to cut them out from the story entirely, with the only references to Millennium being a mention of Blitz's unit by the Valentine brothers, which can only refer to Zorin Blitz, and the fact that the Freak Chips had what appeared to be a swastika symbol in their center. Other than this, there are no references to the organization in the entire series, with Jan Valentine's death not including his iconic flip-off and name check for Millennium from the manga and the OVA series. It's a shame, really, because the lack of a focused third act antagonist really shows in the, well, the third act of Helsing 2001. But Millennium's exclusion also allowed many of the side characters we spoke of earlier to flourish in their own right, so we aren't complaining too much. Number 6. Vampires have an actual society in Helsing 2001 This one came as a surprise, though honestly it shouldn't have considering everything we've gone over so far. In Kota Hirano's Helsing, Alucard is pretty much the only natural vampire that exists. All of Millennium's vampires and werewolves and even Schrodinger were created by the Doctor, who himself used the rotting corpse of Mina Harker to perfect his vampirization formula. Because Mina Harker's blood had been mixed with Alucard's, when she died, her body preserved preserved his life essence, so technically, even the vampires he fights against are his own creations. The Cheddar Priest is the only true vampire whose conversion has never been explained in the manga or the OVA, but turns out he's actually not alone in Helsing 2001. Vampires seem to have an entire secret society in Studio Gonzo's adaptation, and we learn this through a neutral vampire called Helena, who is MI5 agent Harry Anders' contact. Helena has lived about as long as Alucard has, perhaps even longer, given her taste in really old old school decor, and we mean really old school decor. She must have been tethered to a master in her early life, and she encourages Ceres to serve Alucard well, but it was clear that Helena had grown tired of her undying existence. She also directly states that there is a society of true vampires in Britain, and that Helsing had taken out many of her dear friends, so you know, there's that as well. But, despite losing many of her kind to the Helsing family's clandestine operatives, Helena doesn't seem to hold a grudge against them. In fact, there seems to be a number of vampires who exist unharmed, just so long as they're not doing any harm either. This makes a lot more sense than Alucard and the Major being the only two people given a chance of becoming true vampires, with one accepting it and one denying it, but hey, that's just us. Number 7. Alucard vs. Anderson is not resolved in the first anime Something that doesn't make sense is how Helsing 2001 handled Alucard's iconic rivalry with Alexander Anderson because, in our humble opinion, they didn't just drop the ball with this one, they drilled it into the goddamn earth. Anderson was always intended to be Alucard's ultimate foil. His introduction to Helsing 2001 might have been a bit tamer compared to his entry in Helsing Ultimate, but from the get-go, it's clear that this isn't the feared paladin that has become memorable because of how many amens he can get out of his mouth hole in one day. Anderson is, to put it bluntly, a lot less threatening in Helsing 2001, and this is one of those places where the original is simply better than its adaptation. A lot of that is up to the fact that Hirano hadn't yet penned the final stand between Alucard and Anderson in the manga, but Studio Gonzo could have done a better job than ending this foundational rivalry in the supernatural equivalent of a boring subway brawl. Instead of nearly shooting up an art museum alongside his eternal rival like he does in the OVA, Anderson targets Ceres and her crew instead, and Alucard is forced to pursue, leading to their anticlimactic final stand. This is one of those points where the original simply does it better, and if you guys want an unhinged Anderson in your life, then Helsing 2001 is not the show for you guys. 
Number 8. Walter is not the one who betrays Integra towards the end of the series. One of the biggest WTF moments from Helsing Ultimate was Walter's betrayal of Integra. The affable butler slash angel of death just goes rogue in the middle of the series, and the explanation for him joining Millennium feels flimsy at best. Walter had apparently always resented Alucard for his monstrous approach to justice and his inhuman nature, and so he volunteered to be Millennium's double agent and become an artificial vampire himself in order to aid an organization organization that ends up carpet bombing London indiscriminately. It doesn't make any sense to be honest, but Walter vs. Alucard was a bit of a dream match for a lot of people, so Helsing Ultimate coasts by on the hype alone and manages to somehow make it make sense by the time it ends. Helsing 2001 takes a completely different route and removes Walter's betrayal altogether. Instead, he remains Integra's faithful Alfred, and he even saves her from a helicopter crash with nothing but his damn garrot wires. It's pretty impressive all things considered. No, the betrayal comes from someone within the Round Table Convention of Twelve, and though the show never confirms this, the sad part is the perpetrator appears to be Sir Penwood. Remember that Helsing 2001 was adapted from a partially completed source material, so Penwood's last stand technically hadn't happened while Studio Gonzo was making the series. The reason we say Penwood is the traitor is because in Episode 5, he's revealed to be the man who controls the flow of information in Britain, and also the person responsible for keeping Helsing out of the public eye. Towards the end of Helsing 2001, the round table was scheduled to have a meeting at Helsing Manor with the Queen in attendance as well. The convention declared the Tower of London as the Queen's destination publicly to avoid any issues with the ceremony. But the Tower of London is suddenly attacked by vampirized SAS members, and Helsing is declared a terrorist organization shortly thereafter. Because all of this plays out on a television, it's safe to assume that Penwood, as the curator of information in Britain, might be behind the last minute betrayal of Helsing. The show never confirms this this, as the end credits simply state the traitor was discovered and dealt with appropriately, and perhaps that's for the best, because we don't want to sully our memories of the bravest coward that ever lived. Number 9. The final villain of Helsing 2001 is completely different from the manga and the OVA series. Because Millennium didn't exist in Helsing 2001, they had to come up with an entirely new antagonist for the series, and this is perhaps the worst difference between the two shows. Helsing Ultimate's struggle between Alucard and the Major was a battle between opposing philosophies, a battle between an inhuman undead vampire and a man who thought he embodied humanity. Helsing 2001 just decides to have a vampire versus Vampire Showdown for its closing act, and to spice things up, they throw an Egyptian god into the mix, for some reason? Enter Incognito, a true vampire with magical powers who hails from the Dark Continent and knows a sacrificial ritual that can summon the demon god Set. Sounds like a lot being thrown at you all at once, doesn't it? Well, we don't blame you. Incognito was presented as a mere opposite of Alucard in Helsing 2001. Alucard had his castle in Jackal, so Incognito was given an arm-fitted grenade launcher. Both entities derived power by devouring the souls of others, but Incognito was a lot less subtle about it, going directly after Helena and apparently swallowing her whole. While you try to get rid of that mental image, let's hit you with the fact that Incognito also turned an entire SAS battalion into his personal ghoul army, had a werewolf bodyguard in Paul Wilson, had a seductress under his command in Laura, and actually did manage to summon and merge with Set, turning into a godlike entity by the end of the show. But because Incognito was nowhere near as experienced or as powerful a vampire as Alucard, Set ended up abandoning him for Alucard instead, and Incognito died learning that his opponent was none other than the OG Drac, Vlad the Impaler. It makes for a very different viewing experience if you've already seen Helsing Ultimate, and are only now discovering that there's a 2001 version as well. But even this is not the biggest difference between the two shows, because that would be... Number 10. Helsing Ultimate is far more graphic than its tamer predecessor. Say what you will about Helsing Ultimate's stunted pacing, dropped storylines, and logic gymnastics to explain inexplicable betrayals, the one department they always delivered on was action. Kota Hirano created Helsing as a means to break away from his usual stuff and delve into a manga that was purely action-based, and in that regard, Helsing Ultimate more than delivers. There are multiple points throughout the series where you will genuinely question continuing to watch 
watch it because of how wild things get. And the action is the one thing that feels on pace in amongst the haphazard developments that take place in the show overall. But Helsing 2001 plays it a bit too safe in the gore and glory department, which immediately makes it feel tamer. Don't get us wrong, there's plenty of disturbing stuff in Helsing 2001 as well, but it's usually more cerebral more often than not, and it's not nearly as graphic as the things that happen in Helsing Ultimate. The biggest example we have for this is Jan Valentine, who has much of the same dialogue and mannerisms from the manga, but because he isn't going over the top the whole time in Helsing 2001, he feels a lot tamer than his unhinged Helsing Ultimate counterpart, who is downright disgusting in our opinion. But you guys already know that because you've seen our 10 most disturbing Helsing characters list, right? What? Yeah, you haven't? Well, get on it because that list is what you're looking for if you came here to be spooked away. But having said that, action is what makes Helsing the cult classic that it is. The sheer carnage that's on display during Millennium's invasion of London is one of the most striking images in anime history. Yet, Helsing 2001 has not one moment that can match it. We've already told you our unhappiness with how Studio Gonzo handled Anderson vs. Alucard, and, well, without Millennium, you don't even get the scenes that show the real reason why Walter was so scared of the latter that he ended up betraying Helsing. In Helsing 2001, when Alucard drinks someone's blood, it's almost like a sexy, euphoric experience that once roused Ceres into drinking blood herself to quell her hunger. But in Helsing Ultimate, it's pretty much what you and I would think of a vampire bite, and that's absolutely horrifying. His treatment of Rip Van Winkle is all you need to search to understand that Alucard is actually just as deranged as his enemies, and not just a suave vampire detective who casually gives you the best life advice you could possibly get. The graphic violence is what makes Helsing, Helsing. And by toning things down, Studio Gonzo essentially created an entirely different series back in 2001. Marvelous Verdict But, as for this video, that's gonna have to be it. Though there are many differences between Helsing 2001 and Helsing Ultimate, both shows are great in their own regard. Helsing 2001 gives you a more immersive, less expletive-filled viewing experience that is more of a psychological thriller than an action vampire anime. Helsing Ultimate is the exact opposite, as it has balls-to-wall action, with important narrative elements being stitched together cleverly to create a satisfying slasher anime. Both are great, but which camp do you fall under? Let us know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one.